According to the British Big Cat Society, there are around 500 to 600 reports of big cat sightings every year here in the UK. Most recently, in July, a village in Dumfries was put on high alert after two men spotted what they said was a panther prowling in the area. Whilst the beast of Bodmin, oh God, uh, has become the stuff of legends, there's been over 60 sightings of a large black cat that led to the government ordering an official investigation in 1995. But surprise, surprise, this is Cornwall. Nothing to this day has ever been found. So, who wrote this rubbish? Is the cat out of the bag? Well, some experts do believe they could well be thriving in the wild of Britain, having been perhaps exotic pets, which have since escaped, or maybe they've been released back into captivity. Joining me to discuss this, oh, God. Is the cat that got the cream? This man is real. Rick Minter from the Big Cat Conservation Podcast. Wow. And that cool cat and kitten. Yes, what a legend. It's Tiger King star and CEO of the Big Cat Rescue, Carol Baskin, who joins me live from Tampa, Florida. Ricky, let's start with you in your bedroom. Tell us what you've been hearing, genuinely, right, about big cats in the UK. What do you make of these sightings, pal? Tell me more. OK, well, every week I'll get a report and every two weeks we do an interview, an in-depth interview with uh, somebody, a witness, an informant on the podcast. And we hear from them in depth and we compare their sighting with everybody else's. And uh, week on week, year by year, out of the 40 wildcat species in the world, the three consistent <laughs> reports in Britain from people who know nothing about these cats are cats which resemble black panthers, which we think is the black leopard specifically in Britain, mountain lions, the tan coloured cat from the, from the uh, North America and South America, and the lynx. And they're all uh, medium large size cats. They can predate deer. They could survive in the British landscape as stealthy uh, large carnivores without people uh, noticing. But sometimes the, the, the observations are really blatant, and those people can't understand why more people don't see them. That's just how it goes. It's the luck of when you're out. So, so, to, so to this, this, is, this is fascinating. And so bored am I talking about immigration. We thought we'd start with this, Rick. Sort of many questions, big cat expert. How did they get there? And why the hell isn't the government or somebody out there looking for them in case they maul to death people? Well, they don't maul to death people in their native country, as Carol will know from North America. There are about 50,000 mountain lions in North America. There may be two or 300 here in Britain. And those 50,000 ones in North America rarely confront or uh, maul or injure anybody. Occasionally they do, but, the, uh, I mean, millions of people live around those 50,000 mountain lions in North America. I mean, I get that, and Rick, but if you're on the school run, right, or you're in the park and you see a black panther, you'd probably be quite terrified. What I, what I I'm saying to you is why why haven't authorities taken this more seriously if this is true because a lot of people you will understand think this is ludicrous like the Loch Ness monster it's just not possible is it yeah, well, the, the authorities in Britain, apart from some police forces, don't really get informed about it in the way somebody like I do, does, because the authorities have nobody allocated who's trained and um, resourced to deal with it. And what would they do anyway? We can't trap and poison several hundred cats. The collateral damage from that would be significant. And most people, I think, would, would not want that to happen anyway. These cats have almost got their own protection society here already from people who've seen them and who actually have... Well, I was going to ask um, you about that because you were regaling my research is about stories of people have been pounced on them carcasses of dead sheep have you ever seen one tell me Yes, I've seen one, and like lots of the witnesses, I assumed it was a dog for the first 10 seconds. So that meant I couldn't get my camera out in time because I thought, well, that's a, that's a black Labrador, and where are the owners? And after that 10, after t uh, 10 to 20 seconds, I started realising, no, that is a black panther uh, sl slinking around in that meadow in front of me. And uh, then for the next 10 seconds, I took it very seriously and could really clock what it was. And about 80% of the sightings in Britain do conform to to a black panther. They're also called black leopards because we think they are the leopard in its black form. And we do have um, a few bits of hard evidence now, including a couple of um, DNA results, which this latest documentary that's coming out, being, being available on 3rd of September, 
Bantha Britannia declassified has actually helped to get. So that, that uh, documentary has helped the science as well as telling the story of all of this. Listen, Rick Minter, absolutely fantastic. You've changed my opinion in a heartbeat. Rick Minter from the Conversation podcast uh, from his home in Gloucestershire. Very good of you, mate. I, I'm going to be worried on the way home. Let's bring her in now. What a legend. Oh, my God. Carol Baskin, CEO of the Big Cat Rescue, uh, live from Tampa. I'm not usually in awe, Carol Baskin, but I'm completely in awe. Welcome to Jeremy Carl Live. How are you? Hey, all you cool cats and kittens. I got caught in a rainstorm out here, so I am soaking wet. <laughs> what do you make of these big cat sightings in the UK? You're the boss. What's happening? I think it's very likely that it is a black leopard because I've worked with big cats for the past 40 years, and the smartest cats, bar none, are the leopards. And the black leopards, they just disappear into the landscape. Like JK was saying, by the time you get your camera up, they're gone. And they can be right in front of you and you wouldn't even know they were there. So we had, we had a law change in the UK in the 1970s, the Dangerous Animals Act. What, what's the difference between here and America, for example? I mean, it, it, what, what, do, what are people supposed to do? And I'm being serious. If you're on your way out and suddenly there's a leopard or a panther, what are you supposed to do? Well, you guys in the UK are 50 years smarter than us because you <laughs> passed your back in the 70s. We just passed ours last December. So <laughs> finally, it's illegal to own big cats, but people still will break the law. And once those cats get to be adults, they can't handle them anymore. And if they're close to them, you know, they raise them, they bottle raise them, they don't want to kill them, they don't want to admit that they broke the law. And so they'll just turn them loose. And so we get all kinds of reports here in the United States about black leopards running loose as well. It's extraordinary. Rick, if I can bring you back in. I mean, these big cats would be a risk to, to people, but also to pets, to wildlife, to farm animals. Right, Rick? Uh, no, I think that would only no. be the case if there was no... Uh, that they they don't hunt down and track people and show interest in people in their native countries that they don't actually go for sheep much if they've got their natural prey which they've evolved for which is deer and here they've got rabbits and pigeons and pheasants in every square mile of the British countryside they they'll have an easy life there's no stress on them they won't turn on a Rick I'm they, scared they of a chi chi I'm, I'm scared of a chi chi chihuahua or whatever it's called you're talking about saying I've got to bring Carol back in he says no, they're not dangerous. Your average panther or leopard, they're just walking through the town or in the countryside. I mean, what do you do, Carol? You're, you're, you're the ledge. I mean, what, what do you do if one is near you? I mean, I'd run for my bleeding life. What are you supposed to do? Now, I don't think people need to worry about their pets. No leopard wants to get into it with a house cat because they recognise that that's going to be a fight. They don't want some yappy little dog because that's more trouble than what they need. They have plenty of prey out in the wild that they can go after. But if you were to find yourself face to face with a cat, don't run because then you're going to look like prey. And so you should try to make yourself look as big as possible. In my case, I wouldn't recommend this to people because I may get sued over this. But in my case, if I have to approach one of our cats, I will step toward them and show them that I'm in charge and they even though they're so much bigger and stronger than I am, they think that there must be something mentally wrong with me for doing that. And they'll kind of like Why is this off. crazy woman standing right in front of me? We did a poll, actually, team, uh, with the discovery of that photo of a wild panther in the UK. We asked the UK uh, today, do you believe that big cats roam Britain? This is so alien to me, but I love it. 62% of the British population that responded said yes. RE, once I came across a wild panther in the extreme north of the Scottish Highlands, it might have been a lynx, but it was a scary experience. NE, northeast, definitely have seen a large cat myself. It was black and the size of a puma in the North Hampshire area. Rachel, I grew up on the edge of Dartmoor. That's brave. And sightings of big cats were mentioned every few years. I always wanted to see one, but never did. In the early 90s, there was a short film shown on the local news, which contained three large cats walking around a housing estate in Barnstable. DF, obviously nobody's got a name on this show tonight. They're all initial. Uh, back in 2004, my parents and I watched a dark grey panther in our back garden for several minutes before he went back into the trees. I should add that our garden backs onto a mountain and there have been sightings in the area in South Wales before. Sandy saw one in Scotland, very remote, could see it in the distance, definitely a big black cat. And Stuart, there aren't many people here in Cornwall who haven't seen something or know someone who has. I mean, Rick, we're bringing this home. I, I, I started this 10 minutes ago going, oh, for God's sake. But loads of people are saying this is true. Tell me, Rick Minter, please, 
give some advice. Do they take a photo, phone the police, run for their lives, or, as Carol Baskin said, stand in front of them and go, I'm bigger than you, don't give me any rubbish. What happens? What are you supposed to do? Well, if people are really close, they do get edgy and scared about it in Britain, and, and often their dog will notice it. About a quarter of the sightings in Britain, there's a dog or a horse involved, and the dog or horse will get nervous first, and that's why the person will, will see the animal, see the cat. Um, if people are further away, they think like me, like I did when I had my sighting, they think they're seeing a black Labrador. If it's a tan-coloured puma, they think they're seeing a, a tan-coloured Labrador, a, a brown Labrador or, or uh, another dog. So in that, in that time you haven't got time to get your phone out mm. but there are one or two now on some of the facebook groups there's 26 facebook groups across britain and local and national where people discuss these uh, and there's been a photo this week taken um taken in um the midlands of a black panther silhouette rick like i don't want to i don't want to cut you off because you've absolutely changed my opinion i don't know what i'm going to do if i see one i'm going to bloody well phone rick minter big cat conversation podcast thank you before we go to the break the lionesses are taking on spain do you get what i'm doing here this week into the Women's World Cup final. And Carol, apparently you got a message from Tampa for our girls. I am sure those lionesses have the speed of the cheetah, the intelligence of the leopards, and the teamwork of lionesses. Oh, my goodness, they are sure to win. Carol Baskin, you are a legend. Thank you for being on JK Live. And